Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Urban Legends number no. one, published by Dark Horse Comics in 1993. This was an anthology that was supposed to have a second issue, but it never came out. And kind of a fun idea for a compilation. Um, this is before like DC Paradox had their big book of urban legends and uh, other titles of that ilk. So uh, at the time, it was kind of a novel idea. And look at this uh, beautiful cover by Dan Klaus. Probably the only time Dan Klaus has worked for Dark Horse, I imagine. Um, I think it's because Bob Shrek co-edited this. And Bob Shrek seems to have uh, connections to almost every great artist out there. This is illustrating the infamous Kentucky Fried Chicken story where supposedly they had served a customer a deep fried rat. Contents page. The other editor is Sung Koo. And they write a bunch of stories in here. So the first story we have is The Gator Gourmet by Alex Wald. And we see this hobo. And he's just uh, finished cooking up some, uh, some alligator, uh, stew. He tells this other guy, this other homeless guy that there's nothing like sewer gator. And I guess the New York City subways are supposedly riddled, riddled with gators because uh, families will come back from Florida and they'll buy a cute little alligator for their kid. And then when it grows up to be a savage little predator, they flush it down the toilet. And supposedly they all live on the journey through all those pipes and uh, I've heard this uh, since I was a little kid. I think it goes back to like the 50s. This is written and drawn by Alex Wald. A uh, guy who just pops up here and there. He's kind of a mystery, this guy. Even though I'm sure I could look him up on the internet and clear up that mystery. But I'm too lazy to do that. Kind of sharp, uh, nice little uh, strip. This next one is terrible. Um, just the way it's drawn... Why? I mean, it's it's basically an easy story. It's just telling the famous uh, tale of the quivering cactus, which uh, I don't know if you've heard that one. Supposedly a guy is house sitting. The cactus is quivering. It's shaking. And when he calls, he calls up a plant shop, a florist, and they're like, hang up and call 911. Sorry, 911. And then they're like, throw a blanket over that cactus and get the hell out of there. Because it's full of tarantulas. And they explode out into the room. But look at how terrible this art is. This is Carol Sobiksinski. And she uh, used to work for the Comics Journal. And I know there are some shenanigans. Uh, some, uh, she absconded with some stuff. It was a big controversy. But, uh, but she's not a comic book artist, really. And you could tell. This is so... Just like... If this was a mini comic, it would be disappointing. But this is with all these great artists, this is, uh, side by side. So it's kind of weird that they uh, let her draw this. We have a nice one pager by Gary Lieb of Idiot Land fame. And this is uh, called Stuck in the High Branches. And I guess this is an urban legend. Uh, a cat was stuck in a tree and some people came to try to help it and they threw a rope around the branch and try to yanked it down but then the rope snapped and it sent the cat catapulting through the air but of course Gary Lieb takes it one step farther and he's in the stratosphere just traveling all across the world until he goes into outer space god this is good I just love his panels these are great this one isn't really an urban legend, but you get a page of Arthur Adams drawing Godzilla, which is what he was born to do. And this is called uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. So I guess I, if this counts as an urban legend, supposedly there's two different endings to this movie. In the U.S., Kong wins. In the Japan release, Japanese release, Godzilla wins. But it's not true, apparently. Kind of silly. 
And uh, you get to see Arthur Adams. This one's nice, Spider in the Hairdo by Mitch O'Connell. And uh, this is just a great Mitch O'Connell art in his, his total retro style. This is about the infamous beehive. Uh, a, a girl, a high school girl has a beehive. She starts feeling itching on her scalp. But, you know, it's she can't undo the beehive. It's like got a one-inch thick layer of hairspray on it. She eventually goes insane from the pain and gets run over by a truck. And after the truck hits her, her beehive splits open. And we see that there's a whole nest of black widow spiders that have been living in her beehive. And because they couldn't escape, they were just biting her scalp over and over again until the venom took effect. That's a nice one. Oh, this is great. Ivan Brunetti contributes four little strips doing four different urban, ele uh, sorry, urban legends. We get the baby in the microwave, which we'll actually see more in depth of later. Of course, it's so, I always heard it this way too. It was always hippies. Like these hippies were so high that they microwave their baby. Because you know how marijuana does that to you. This is about the green M&Ms, which supposedly have an aphrodisiac in them that give you a boner. But then he sneaks in the other urban legend about them is that uh, M&M shells are actually made from cockroach shells. Rusty, that crazy ass Doberman pincher. This is the um, choking Doberman story. A family gets home from vacation and their dog is choking on a finger, the finger of the, the house robber. That's no chihuahua, that's a goddamn rat. And that one's kind of self-explanatory. But all uh, made much more funny by Ivan Bernetti. Drawing in these various styles. This one's Cocksucker Blues. I definitely heard this as a kid. I always heard it was about Rod Stewart. So supposedly, Rod Stewart uh, got caught... Uh, driving erratically or speeding. And when the cop, and I guess he was really fucked up. So the cops uh, pumped his stomach and there was a gallon of male jism in there. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said male jism. I don't think there's, is it female jism? Is that called jism as well? Uh, these are questions left for better minds than I. <laughs> but this is a take on that by Peter Bagg. Typical nice Peter Bagart. We see this jaded rock star who's so bored with everything that he thinks it'll be fun to suck off like, I don't know, 50 guys. And then when they pump his stomach, the nurse is almost vomiting. She's like, what was the guy eating? Elmer's glue? This one is uh, useless. I don't know what the hell's going on in this one. Here's this guy, Paul Nitsche, who I never heard of before. It's not really even comics. It's, uh, I don't know, some graphic design and some blocks of print. And I don't really know what even what he's talking about. Um, he uses this little girl as a narrator. One day I took a walk with no shoes on. Uh, I stepped on a nail that went in my body. I had to get a shot. There's a little hole where the shot was. My daddy tells me things about the little hole. He tells me that it is like a little button. If I press on it, my arm will fall off or I will blow up. Never heard this uh, thing as a kid. It just, it's just poorly written and poorly, not that great, drawn, well drawn. It's not even comics. Here we have The Vanishing Hitchhiker, written by Sung Koo and drawn by Lennon Delsol. I haven't seen this guy since first comics. He used to draw uh, the backups in a warp. Looks like he got a little better since then. And this one I don't think I ever heard either. Apparently this guy in a motorcycle picks up a hitchhiker. She's really hot. And this uh, 
tanker drives across the road and she dares him to go for it. She says, there's enough room. You can make it right under it. And the guy does and his head chops off. Turns out she was a ghost with a, a twisted sense of humor who liked to decapitate guys. This next one's called The Winning Ticket. And uh, it's written and drawn by Hilary Barda. And guys, look at this art, man. It, just the duotone stuff he's doing in this. Hilary Barda is such a freaking master. See that? The guys in the background? They're a lighter shade. I mean, this is just amazing craftsmanship. I love Hilary Barda. He's a very unsung, unfortunately. I guess because he draws funny. And... There's not a place for funny comics anymore. But I guess, I don't know this urban legend either. Apparently a guy won the lottery and he passes it around to all his friends at the bar to show off. And then he says, come on, guys, now give it back. And when he gets it back, he's like, hey, this isn't my ticket. And then we see all the guys in the bar just like with sly smiles on their face. Oh, this is nice. The Babysitter and the Psycho Killer. This is by written and drawn by Richard Sala. This is basically like that movie When a Stranger Calls. So the babysitter, she keeps getting calls that are threatening. She calls the operator to trace the calls. And of course, the operator calls back and says, We traced the call. It's coming from within that house. And then she turns around and there's this horrible psycho killer coming down the stairs for her. So she runs away. And then when the police came, the man had escaped. Oh, I'm sorry, they caught the man and all the children were dead in their beds with their throats slit. I remember hearing that as a ghost story. That was scary. God, this Richard Soller art's so nice. <laughs> I love the way he draws that guy. This one's kind of silly. Uh, little Paul and Little Sung star in a true urban legend. So words by Sung Koo, art by Paul Guinan. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Guinan. And I guess this is uh, that whole urban legend about like peeing on the third rail. But uh, these guys decide to do it. And it actually feels good. They have a good time doing it. It's like, ooh, it tingles. <laughs> Not that great. Oh man, this is some nice early Mike Allred. I kind of missed the style of Mike Allred before his style got very slick. It's called Earwig. And I've heard this urban legend before. And um, basically this woman goes to a doctor. Her, she's got a horrible earache. He looks inside and realizes she's got an earwig in there. And he pulls it out. Look at this giant thing that was in her ear. And then he says, you know, he tells her, there's a silly notion that the earwig likes to make its way through the ear canal to feed off the brain and even lay its eggs. Is something wrong? And the woman says, you pulled the bug out of my left ear. Now I have an earache in my right ear. And we see her collapse, dead, and all these earwigs come out of her ear. That's a really good strip. I like that one. I like how he even does this nice thing with the logo. Great page. Oh, this one's amazing too. Stairmaster, oh. It's by Matt Wagner. You'd never guess by looking at this. This is so like that French artist, Frank Queen. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too. Frank Quine, Frank Queen. And I don't even, didn't even know about this, but apparently when Stairmasters first came out, supposedly, they would give women orgasms. I guess the motion of doing the Stairmaster. So we see this woman in a gym and she has an orgasm and she's kind of embarrassed because she does it loudly. And then of course she continues doing it and she keeps owing louder and louder. She never went back to that health club, they say, but they put more machines in the very next day. 
Such interesting art from uh, Matt Wagner. I wouldn't mind if he did more stuff like this. This looks great to me. It's kind of funny art. So this one's interesting. I, I just thought this was like a, just a Chicago. Uh, I'm sorry, just a thing that Chicago people knew. I guess these people are Chicagoans. It's called Burn Man. It's written by Sung Koo and Mark Ricketts with art by Mark Ricketts. Mark Ricketts did a bunch of comics for Caliber Press in the 90s, like Warp Walking. And he had some comic book about cowgirls or something. Um, he was really good, as you can see. He's a pretty skillful artist, but just never made a dent. I, I guess his writing wasn't that great. I used to buy that Warp Walking comic and kind of liked it, but I sold it a long time ago, so I guess I didn't like it enough. So I guess a burn man, I, I saw this guy. I lived in Chicago for a year, and I'd see him on the L. And he really was kind of terrifying. He looked like a monster from a movie. Um, and basically the urban legend of Birdman is that everyone has some different theory about what his story is. This guy says, oh, yeah, this guy was weird. He used to get sexually aroused from burning himself. So he just kept doing it until his face all shriveled up. <clears throat> And uh, supposedly uh, there was a serial killer on the loose and the cops thought it was Birdman because he was taking the skin off of his victims. <coughs> um, some people think that he ran into a, a burning building, building to save a chihuahua. And uh, we actually see Birdman and he did look like that. And he'd be on the L, bum and change all the time. That's a pretty good likeness. It's weird how everyone just called him Burn Man. He was like a local legend. This one, I never heard this story, but it's kind of a cute little story. Wrong Place at the Right Time, written by Warren P. Prindle. With, uh, oh, I'm sorry, he does the story in pencils and Bill Reinhold inks. Bill Reinhold used to draw Badger. For forever. And he did some other stuff, like Punisher and stuff. So apparently, there was this woman who was shopping, and she had to pee really bad. Every store was closed. She knocked on every door. Nobody was there. And finally, she finds a funeral parlor that the doors open. So she goes inside to use the ladies' room. But uh, she felt some. She felt a little sacrilegious about what she did. So she felt it was wrong to leave without paying her respects. So she signed the guest registry. So uh, a few weeks later, she gets a registered letter. Apparently, it's uh, it's from the the dead guy's uh, lawyer. Seems the old geezer was rich but lonely, so anyone who went to the funeral was to get ten grand. So this woman got ten grand just for uh, peeing at a funeral parlor and signing a registry. That seems highly doubtful. This is uh, John A. Kurtz. Uh, does the art here, and it's uh, written by Sung Koo. So this is about the spider eggs and bubble yum story. I grew up uh, hearing that all the time. When you look at bubble yum, it was, the, it was that mushy gum and it was really sweet. You could see crystals in it and all these, every kid seemed to believe that they were spider eggs. So this one girl in class loved this gum, this bubble yum. And she, um, of course it was very sugary. So she started getting acne. She had this huge zit in the middle of her forehead. One day in English class, she passes out. And all of a sudden, everyone's looking at her and the pimple starts moving like an uncontrollable yolk. And then it burst open. And nine big hairy spiders crawled out. And the girl was dead. The spider eggs were planted in her brain. I think that one really happened. That sounds true. This is that uh, famous uh, 
It's almost like a joke. In fact, I've seen this uh, filmed as a short sketch. It, it was in one of those movies like Kentucky Fried Movie or uh, Tunnel Vision. So this old, the way the story goes, this guy's on a first date with a woman. She lives in a high-rise apartment. She's got a cute little dog. She says, oh, I'll be ready in a few minutes. And so the guy starts throwing the ball for the dog. And then he throws it pretty far and it bounces off the balcony. And the dog leaps right over the balcony to his death. And then, of course, when the woman comes out all ready for a date, the guy's just like, gub. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, this is drawn by Bernie Moreau. Or Bernie Moralt of the Jam fame. Pretty nice uh, art if you like Bernie Moralt, the style. Here we have Evan Dorkin uh, telling us about the baby in the microwave in more detail. And uh, so basically this is the typical story and it always involves the babysitter, a babysitter who's like either drunk or high. And apparently the way the story goes is the baby gets wet or it pukes up on itself, it gets dirty and she has to wash it off. And in her, in her adult state, she figures the best way to dry it, of course, is to put it in a microwave for a few minutes. So she puts the baby in. Of course, the baby explodes in this gory, disgusting mess, which Evan Dorgan lovingly draws. Gross. The way I always heard the story, which I kind of liked a little bit more, it had a little more poetry to it, <clears throat> is this hippie uh, couple is, um, you know, babysitting. And they, they leave with a, a few instructions for them. They're like, hey, do you mind Here's a few, uh, if you do a few things while you're babysitting? So, you know, put the baby to bed at eight. And then at nine, would you uh, put this, uh, this roast in the oven? So it'll be ready by the time we get home. Of course, as you can imagine, wires get crossed. And the parents come home. And the first thing they do is run upstairs to see uh, their baby in the crib. And when they look in the crib, they see a pot roast. And, as the, and all of a sudden, they realize that they smell cooking flesh, <laughs> cooking meat. But uh, I always thought that was a better way to tell the story. That's how I heard it. This one, The Biting Horses, is uh, written and drawn by Stuart Grace. G-R-A-I-S. Never seen him before or since. I never heard this urban legend either. Apparently, this girl's on a uh, Ferris wheel. I'm sorry, a merry-go-round. And all of a sudden, ev at every rotation, she says, Daddy, the horses are biting me. And he just thinks his daughter's being silly. You know, she's got a childlike imagination. But then when the merry-go-round stops, she falls off the horse dead. And apparently there was rattlesnakes nesting in this wooden horse. And they were bite biting her the whole time. Apparently her last words to her father were, Daddy, sue this place. He did, but he cried for the rest of his days. This one is called The Turkey Neck by Terry LeBan. And apparently this woman comes into work one day, her arm is broken, and everyone wants to know why. So she tells them this incredible story. Over Thanksgiving break, her husband got really drunk and passed out on the couch. She couldn't move him. She couldn't get him up to bed. A little later on, her two teenage sons who had been out came home and found their dad in a drunken stupor. As a joke, they got the turkey neck from the kitchen and stuck it into his unzipped fly. In the middle of the night, the woman woke up and went down to check on her husband. And the cat is gnawing on the turkey neck. And when the woman saw this, she fainted dead away and broke her arm in the fall. <laughs> kind of funny. This is an odd one, A Very Private Hell by Scott Musgrove. I think this is the guy who did that Fat Dog Mendoza strip for Dark Horse. He was just like, he did a lot of stuff for Dark Horse, but his style is disturbing. There's something wrong 
When I look at his art, I really like it. So this is a roundabout way of telling the, the losing your kidney in Mexico story. So there's many variations on this tale, but basically someone uh, gives someone a drink or candy and it's got knockout drops in it. The person wakes up two days later in a bathtub full of ice. He's got a, he's got a huge cut on the side of his body, a wound. And they basically harvested his organs while he was passed out. And I've heard this story ever since I was a little kid. But he uh, definitely goes, just basically makes it this uh, funny character piece about this guy. Just rant, talking and rambling. Pretty good stuff. And there you have it, guy. Urban Legends number one uh, from Dark Horse Comics, 1993. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. I think it's kind of a mixed bag. There's some real stinkers in here. But... If it wasn't for those, this would be a pretty damn good anthology. There's some choice stuff in here. So uh, definitely, if you see this in the dollar bin, definitely worth picking up. I mean, I got to say, just for this cover alone, that is a striking cover. I love the logo. I love uh, Dan Claus did the logo, by the way. And I love the, the bright yellow. It's just a really good looking cover. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.